Hello. This is Anne again, Silk 201. We're going to talk today about what is language, which is like a huge question. <laughs> and we're going to try to narrow it down a little bit. Uh, before I begin, I want to say I speak slowly. Um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a southerner, we speak slowly, so just be patient with me. Sometimes I'm entertaining, so uh, probably what somebody else can say in 10 minutes, it takes me maybe 15 minutes, maybe longer. Okay, so let's begin. Um, what do we know about language? Think about it. We know we speak a language. We know we use it all the time, even in our dreams. Hmm. Okay, one thing we know is there are over 6,000 languages in the world. That's crazy. It's a crazy amount of languages. If you only know one, <laughs> then you're missing out a little bit. Um, even I would say, I would add to that, that languages, uh, lang a language is different from a dialect, is different from a creole, depending on who defines it. So if you're saying you speak a dialect, but you really believe that that's a language, but for some political reason, it's not considered a proper language, the prescriptivist there, then um, who's to say it's not a language? Who makes those rules, right? Okay, 90-10, 90% of people in the world speak 10% of the languages. So there are many languages with a lot fewer speakers. However, maybe they're isolated communities. Um, there are also languages that are dying out, like we talked about in the last episode, because um, I'm making episodes here. It, you're going to binge watch them all. And then, um, yeah, so they die out. Maybe a certain community decides that it's more important for their kids to learn um, the predominant language, and so the native language starts dying out. And that happens in a lot of communities here in Arizona also. Logic, I'm not talking about everyday logic, rapper, singer. I'm talking about uh, languages are not logical, nor are they illogical. So if I say, well, Spanish doesn't, I'm just going to give you an example in Spanish because I speech, I teach Spanish um, from 101 all the way through 412. So I would say that sometimes my students are like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why do they put the adjective after the noun instead of before the noun, I'm like, I don't know, that's just what they do. That, you know, it's logical to them. So it's not logical, nor is it illogical. Uh, language is systematic, um, but also diverse. So systematic, I'll give you an example. Um, every language has a certain number of sounds, right? And also every language has um, either goes subject, verb, object, ob object, verb, subject. Uh, what, which one did I miss? Subject, object, verb, right? Or verb, well, anyway, okay, you get the point. Um, so those are all different systems, even though they're diverse systems, yeah. Sounds, I mentioned that. Um, there are some sounds that it's interesting, last night I was talking to my husband and he said, um, gosh, I have to remember what we were talking about. It's the difference with the S, -s sound and the Z sound. Z does not exist in some languages. 
Um, that sonorant sound, uh, sonorant meaning it's it's uh, it's making a sound instead of s is more like a silent sound. That's, that's kind of what what I'm talking about. So if when he says eyes, you hear the z, z, z. ice. He's Hispanic, and in Spanish, um, you don't pronounce the Z. There's no Z sound. Yeah, they have the letter Z, but it's S. So it's interesting. There are also sounds that could mark a certain language. Um, you, you can even talk about tones here, um, such as uh, if I my students are learning um, how to say mi padre. Mi padre is uh, my dad, my father. It sounds different if you say mi padre. The P has an H after it. P aspirated. Or mi padre, which is not aspirated. Um, so in English, the P has a different um, sound, really. As in, and that happens a lot. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to mention about this as well is uh, sign language. So sign language doesn't have sounds, right? But they do have all kinds of different variants as far as um, facial expressions or using one hand over the other um, makes, it, makes a difference. So that's kind of like the sounds. And then children. What do we know about language? Children learn how to speak a language. How do they learn how to speak a language? What do you think? Because their parents teach them that language, OK. But then they start using it and saying their own sentences. Um, so I don't know. Parental advisory, explicit content. This part, in this part, I want to explain to you that no matter what word is used in this course, whether it be a word that you find offensive, a word that you use all the time, maybe you understand the word to mean something different than what somebody else uses it for, um, they're just words. And we are objectively looking at, at these words. So I always give the example in my classroom of bitch. Bitch doesn't mean what it used to mean. My son is 18. He says he talks about uh, he talks about bitches all the time. Those effing bitches and whatever. And my bitch, you hear it in music. Now it just means like my girl, my lady, my why? I don't know. You might still find it offensive. Uh, I actually do. But at the same time, um, I don't want to prohibit you or me using any certain term. So this is just a warning that it might come up. And I'm also telling you that I'm not trying to be offensive. I have three kids. I try to keep a, a stable, like a norm, OK? However, you hear it all the time. Now, turn the radio on. You hear it. Um, OK. So moving on, let's talk about design features of communication systems, which is the last main part of this um, episode. Uh, so we have nine here. And you see that the top one, number one, is a lot darker. And then as you go down, um, you see they get fainter and fainter and fainter. That's because the most common features of language are the top three, 
Then you go down to the middle three, or middle, or four and five. And then six and seven are not as common, not used with as many, um, let's say animals um, do not necessarily understand some of these. Here, here we have these two little birds talking. By the way, tweet, are they tweeting? <laughs> Okay, and then um, eight and nine are even smaller, okay? So let's go through them. Mode of communication is the most common, okay? That's talking, talking came first. Writing or texting, right? Which depends on your thoughts about writing, whether that's actually writing or not, but um, making faces, crying, those are all modes of communication, right? So if an animal looks at you in a certain way, <laughs> let's say, let's talk about my cats at five o'clock, even at 4.30, they know, you know, it's time, it's time to eat, mom, it's time to eat. I have two cats. They're not missing any meals, I'm telling you, but they love to eat and they know what time it is internally they have some sort of clock meow 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 right they're crying kind of they're communicating with me semanticity fixed and stable connections between sign and referent um so we can talk about bitch which has different semanticity for somebody my age than it, it does for an 18 year old who is talking to his friends about his bitch, right? If I overhear that, I, that, that's a little bit freaky, right? So the person that you're talking to, because in order to communicate, there has to be at least two people, right? So, well, maybe not. I, I'm speaking and you're listening. If I say you're a bitch, then what does that word, what connotation does that word have? What is the meaning of it well, to you versus the meaning of it to me? Are we on the same wavelength? Do you get me, right? Um, and you can also think about the birds tweeting, okay? Birds have different sounds, um, and one certain sound or one certain tweet might mean one thing, and another tweet might mean, a, mean another. You hear that whales also have different um, sounds that they make underneath the water, and there are a lot of studies, dolphins, right? So these are the most common among, among all species, but the farther you go down, the more human you are, okay? Because language is actually, mm, well, we can, we can debate this, but language is human beings speak language, right? Pragmatic function number three, serve a useful purpose. Um, okay, well, I'm, I'm tweeting because I need something. I'm meowing because I want um, I want my food. It's five o'clock, right? I know you're gonna get up because if not, I'm just gonna keep harassing you. Um, number four, interchangeability, switching roles. So sometimes I can ask a question and other times I can answer a question, right? Also, I have roles as far as mom, teacher, person. I know it's hard to believe I'm, you know, wife. So I have all these roles, all these hats. Probably most animals don't really have that. They just have one role. Yeah. So think about that. Cultural transmission. 
effectively learn it from others. Yeah. So if I learn not to say certain words, <laughs> in Spanish there's a word, coger, which is fine in Panama where my husband's from and, and other countries as well. However, in certain countries like Mexico, it is um, not a good word. I, I would not say you should use that word. Okay, so I effectively would learn that cultural norm of we don't use that word. If I want to fit in, I learn another word. So that's why when I want to fit in with my son, I use certain terminology that I don't use with others. Okay. Um, arbitrariness. Uh, horse is a horse because that's the word we use. Why do we call it a horse? I don't know. It's just arbitrary. No. Why do, why do we say it's blue? Why can't it be green? You ever played that game where you look at a word and it says blue, but the lettering is actually in green? No. Arbitrary. Uh, discreteness, finite set of units, limited sounds and words. So that's what, when I was talking about language has a certain number of sounds. Um, each language has a finite set of sounds because if it were infinite, um, it would be so hard to learn, right? I don't think that animals, well, maybe they follow that, but um, the combinations together, I, I don't think so. Um, number eight, displacement can talk about what isn't there. So you know when you talk to a little kid and uh, maybe a baby and you say, oh, daddy's over there, and then he looks over there, but he doesn't see daddy. But then when they get older, then they look over there and they actually do see daddy. Well, it's, it's kind of the same with language, right? You can talk about something that's not tangible. You can talk about theories, philosophy, um, displacement. I mean, is it there? Is it not there? I don't know. To be or not to be? And then number nine, productivity. We have an infinite capacity to produce. I can create words all day long. I can produce different sentences depending on where I am, who I'm talking to. I can use different words in those sentences. I can make it a question and switch the order of the syntax, right? Um, infinite. So then I can say, I music lead. Uh, see you next time.